Hi, so in this video I will show how you can assess physical activity intensity accurately and how you can differentiate between light, moderate and vigorous intensity activity with scientifically valid ways. So let's get started. First of all we can start why is it important to detect the different intensities and this is important as different intensities have clearly differing physiological responses and thus different health effects. So light intensity activity might have very different health effects than the moderate and especially the vigorous intensity activity. So when you're actually doing a scientific study you will find easier significant differences between different variables when you have actually identified the intensity of the activity more accurately. And how it is done often is that you only have the moderate and vigorous intensity activity together as a one, one variable called NVPA. So how it is done often it is that you have just one variable for moderate and vigorous intensity activity. So it's all put together and does not make difference between moderate and vigorous and usually it doesn't really cover light intensity activity at all. This actually comes from, from the questionnaires. It was rather easy to define with questionnaires the moderate and vigorous intensity. So basically you could ask for example that how often you go to exercise and the assumption is that if you go and exercise it is at least of moderate intensity activity. Or you could ask questions such as that how often do you do physical activity that you get out of breath. So that would mean that it's at least moderate and it will be defined as moderate to vigorous intensity activity. But nowadays we are not restricted only for questionnaires. We have really good devices that can measure physical activity, mainly accelerometers, which can actually really detect the movement of a person. So we shouldn't be bound to this old method that we just got used to measuring only MVPA, that we would continue doing just that. This is especially true for thigh-worn accelerometers, as they are actually really measuring the movement of the thigh, which is quite a big mass and is related really closely to physical activity and movement. But even with thigh-worn accelerometry, it needs to be done correctly how to analyze the different intensity categories of physical activity. So let's then look how many of the manufacturers and algorithms are doing it, both for wrist and thigh-worn devices. So basically accelerometer is measuring acceleration, usually in three axes, so in three spatial dimensions. And you have the acceleration signal. Usually how it's done is that you calculate one variable, for example a resultant vector, which is kind of just telling the amount of acceleration. And then you have from zero to something and you define a cut point that everything under is not MVPA and everything over is MVPA. So basically you just have a cut point over this, it is moderate to vigorous intensity and everything here is under. And this clearly has its limitations. Other way is to have just one algorithm and then that more acceleration you have, higher the intensity will be. So this actually makes sense within a certain activity. Let's say for example walking, faster your thigh is moving, probably higher the intensity of walking is. But this doesn't really make sense between activities. So for example if we compare walking versus cycling. The other one is weight bearing activity, meaning that you need to carry your weight all the time while cycling the bike is actually carrying your weight so the energy expenditure will be different and also the 
movement of the thigh in cycling versus walking, it is different. So one algorithm doesn't really work between different activities. And same goes, for example, if we compare walking to running, the movement of the thigh is not same and the intensity is not linear. So one algorithm, it's not an ideal solution to measure intensity of, of physical activity. Much better way is to first detect the activity type and then within that activity the amount of acceleration links closely to the intensity of that activity. So you need to have own algorithm for each activity type. For example, it's own algorithm for sitting, standing, walking, cycling, running and other activities. So you have own algorithm and this way it will be much more accurate to estimate the intensity of physical activity. So how it's done often is that you have just a <laughs>